Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Ramkrishna Hede. Uh, today let's discuss about uh, one of the very important protocol uh, comes under channelization. It's called CDMA. Uh, here some of the material I've referred directly from a Porzon book. Uh, it's called the Data Communication Networking by Porzon, uh, which I've mentioned already in this uh, particular uh, slide. Now let's discuss about uh, uh, the protocol called CDMA. Uh, the CDMA is, uh, stands for uh, Code Division Multiple Access. Uh, in CDMA, what happens? Uh, uh, one channel carries all the transmissions simultaneously. Imagine you have a multiple stations, right? Uh, in reality, you have a multiple stations. Uh, that multiple stations normally shares a single channel, right? Many stations normally share a single channel. In CDMA, what happens? The one channel carries all the transmissions simultaneously right this is what normally happens at cdma uh, cdma means uh, communication with the different codes right the name itself indicates code division multiple access that means uh, cdma means communication with the different codes that is every individual station will assign with a different codes here every individual station is assigned with a different codes uh, see let us uh, we, we, we can understand the cdma uh, by uh, uh, using some analogy uh, uh, here, uh, let us imagine there are many people uh, uh, are sitting in a room. Okay, many people are sitting in a room and uh, uh, see two people uh, wants to communicate with each other. Let us imagine uh, two people are talking uh, with one of the uh, language called in English, right? And other people will uh, imagine other people will not understand uh, uh, English. Now, two people can able to uh, speak in English, right? Now, uh, assume another two people are also talking in a different language. For example, uh, in maybe in Hindi, maybe other people may not understand Hindi, right? But only two people can able to understand Hindi. So those two people will talk with each other. Talk with uh, each other. Like this, uh, you know, um, many people can able to communicate with e with each other in a certain code languages, certain codes with the help of a code, right? For example, what I've taken here in English is the code which. Uh, maybe two people can able to communicate with a particular language called in english but other people will not understand that other people will not understand english that is why only two people can able to communicate with each other with, uh, with a particular language called in english right here what happens a single channel single channel we can refer here the uh, the whole room space whole room space maybe we can refer as a single channel right in that particular room there are many people are sitting right many people are sitting uh, sitting that means so you can uh, you can say the people uh, maybe you can uh, uh, you know uh, connected as uh, stations different stations right many people are sitting in the particular room right the space of the room is you can take it as a single channel right uh, this is how you can understand uh, about the cdma now if you can refer this particular figure if you can refer this particular figure simple idea of data communication maybe the how the communication exists uh, uh, in a single channel with the help of a code now uh, you can understand more clearly here you can understand more clearly there are four stations, right uh, station one station two station three and station four there are four stations you can see here all the four stations are communicating over the single channel this is what the single channel coming uh, single channel right now let us imagine uh, so whatever the d1 we have represented this is actually uh, uh, station one is sending the data the data of the station one c1 what you have referred is the code one of the station one similarly d2 is the data of the station two c2 is the code of the station two similarly uh, station three will have a data of d3 and code of c3 d4 is the station of uh, data of the station four c4 is the code of the station four now you can make out c1 c2 c3 c4 all these codes are different here that means every individual station is assigned with a different course right every individual station is assigned with a different course now what happens what the definition says here what the definition says uh in cdma one channel carries all the transmissions simultaneously the word simultaneously means here you can see what happens uh, this is a single channel right the summation of all the data, maybe all the station which sends the data, right? Some of all the data is normally sent here. This case, you can see the station uh, uh, in in station one, right? Uh, the data of the station one is multiplied with 
the code of the station one this is actually forms one from the station one similarly at the station two data of the station two is multiplied with code of that particular station this is what comes here then station three data of the station three is multiplied with the code of station three this is comes here like similarly it happens the station four also now what happened the sum of this all this uh, uh, sum, sum of all these actually transmit over this particular channel now this is become data now right uh, right this whole thing is become a data now whole thing is become a data and this is actually sent over the common channel this is what normally happens uh, in the uh, you know uh, uh, cdma cdma with the help of the different cores now uh, one of the very important thing you supposed to know when it comes to a code here here uh, we assume the code assigned to the station should have a following properties right whatever the code you supposed to be assigned to individual station right should have the following the should have following properties first property is that uh, if multiply each station okay if multiply each station by another result should be zero if multiply let us imagine uh, station one and station two multiply the code i'm talking about related to code here code of station one and code of station two if you, if, if, if you multiply the result should be zero that, that is a first property right now second property is if multiply each code by itself if multiply each code by itself the result should be four let us uh, uh, take an example of uh, station one uh, which is having a code of c1 now c1 is multiplied by itself that is c1 multiplied by c1 the result should be four the result should be four this is the second property of the code you need to remember that okay we need to assume these two properties when you assign a code to the stations now uh, one more very important thing you're supposed to know is that suppose uh, see there are four stations are communicating over the common channel here but uh, imagine there are only two station wants to uh, talk to each other uh, station one and station two want to talk to each other station two is uh, hearing from uh, station one station two wants to hear from the station one what is actually happens here this case what happens now the station two right uh, this case what happened the station two multiply its data with the code sent by station one okay with the code sent by the station one right now the station two what actually does now the station two what actually does should have to the uh, divide the result by four to get the data from the station one whatever the result you got it when you multiply with d2 with uh, the code sent by uh, station one whatever the result you're going to get it that result you need to you have to divide it by a particular value four divide by four then uh, you will get an exact data which is sent by the station d1 now the station d2 can able to get a data what is actually uh, the original data can able to get it uh, from uh, the data which is sent by the station one okay uh, this is how uh, normally happens uh, when the communication uh, exists between two uh, different stations uh, different station in this particular uh, arrangement here now uh, another very important uh, thing you need to discuss here is call it call it as uh, chip sequence now what is actually meaning of chips so you're supposed to know the meaning of chips first now uh, chip is nothing but each station is assigned with a code right each station is assigned with a, a unique code right each station is assigned with a code code which is a sequence of numbers right code is nothing but a sequence of numbers that is actually called as a chips right each station is assigned with a code which is the sequence of numbers normally call it as chips normally call it as a chip a chip here right uh, you can see uh, chip one this is this is actually uh, different sequences you can see right this is a c1 at the station c1 you have a particular code uh, code called c1 right now this c the code c1 will contains this is the sequence plus one plus one plus one plus one right plus one and code two you have another sequence called plus one minus one plus one minus one now what is this plus one minus one so whenever the station is sending the data uh, sending the data uh, as one sending the data as one okay 
now that is actually we we actually call it as one whenever the day of the, the, the that is actually call it as plus one whenever the station is sending the uh, data value zero that we are representing as minus one that we are representing as minus one suppose the station is not sending any data then the value can be represented the uh, the value which is in the sequence you can write an, uh, write it as a zero write it as zero right suppose station wants to send the data as one then uh, the, the number you are going to represent in the sequence is plus one suppose the station wants to send the data sending the data as zero right the number you are representing in a sequence is minus one here minus one actually represents the station is sending zero plus one represents the station is sending one suppose if uh, zero comes suppose there is no zero, uh, zero in this particular sequence suppose zero comes in the sequence that means the particular station is not sending any data right that is actually meaning here now uh, this is about the chips now some of the properties of a sequence see we are discussing discussed about the sequence here right this is a sequence plus one plus one plus one plus one this is actually one of the sequence now uh, every sequence uh, you know like uh, uh, will have a, a certain properties that means uh, the properties of a sequence we need to discuss here the first property of the sequence is each sequence is made up of n elements okay see uh, this is actually property of a sequence here property of a sequence is each sequence is made up of n elements okay each sequence is made up of n elements n elements now uh, second property here n actually represents the number of stations each sequence is made up of n elements so whatever n you are going to represent is the uh, nothing but a number of stations okay now uh, second uh, property uh, is multiplication of a sequence by a scalar value the scalar value you can take any scalar value for example if you can take uh, scalar value as 2 uh, we'll uh, we'll see how this uh, you know uh, multiplication of the scalar value here is 2 then we can able to understand just to wait for two minutes or i think uh... we can able to understand here we just wait for two minutes so in this case what happens let us imagine right uh, multiplication of a sequence by a scalar let us imagine two two you need to multiply two multiplied by okay Two multiplied by you take uh, one of the sequences you take uh, you take one of the sequences maybe plus one okay take as uh, plus one then uh, another one is plus one right another one is maybe you can take it as minus one then another one you take it as minus one now this case what happens what is actually result of this the result of this is supposed to be what is equal to what result of this is supposed to be you will get an another sequence another sequence right the result sequence uh, resulted sequences what happens this is a plus two comma plus two right not a comma here plus two then you have then you have what is the next one minus two then you have minus two right then you have a minus two this is actually uh meaning of multiplication of a sequence by a scalar value right that means this two is a scalar value right this two should be multiplied with every element in the sequence there are four elements in the sequence right plus one plus one minus one minus one this scalar value should be multiplied with every element in the sequence here every element in the sequence that's what we have done it here. multiplied with every element in the sequence this is what we you got the this is what we have got it right multiplication of the sequence here right this is the uh, this what the second one now let us uh, take it as a third one let us take it as a third one that is the inner product of uh, two equal sequences inner product of two equal sequences you need to take two equal sequences here it should be two equal se equal sequence let us uh, take what is the meaning of two equal sequence here let us take first value as uh, plus one okay then you have another one is a plus one then you have a minus one right 
minus one, you take uh, say uh, minus one, you take one more value as a minus one, okay, minus one. Then you need to multiply with uh, what is that equal sequence? Equal sequence in the sense should have a similar value. Same value should be there here also. Equal sequence, right? That means you should have what is that? Uh, plus one. Then uh, you have uh, plus one. Then you have minus one. Then you have minus one. Minus one, right? You need to multiply this. You need to multiply this. Now, when you multiply this, when you multiply this, what is the result here? What is the result you are going to get it here? Right? You need to, uh, what is the result supposed to be? So here, plus one, plus one. What is, the, what is the result supposed to be? It should be one, right? It is one, multiply is one. Then again, multiply with, this is actually plus, okay, plus. Then one and one, again, you'll get a plus one here, right? Then again, multiply minus one, minus one. If you multiply these two, what happens? It comes again plus one. It again plus one. Then again, minus one, minus one, and minus one. If you multiply these two, you'll get again plus one. You'll get a plus one, right? Right? And this is uh, minus one, and you have a minus one here. Minus one. What is the, the result? What is supposed to get it is what? Here is the plus one now. Right? Here is a plus one. This is what the resultant, that means inner product of two equal sequences. Whatever you are going to get it here. What is the value of this? This is equal to, this is equal to what? This is equal to four. The value of this is equal to four. Well, up, this is equal to four. Now you can see this, right? Inner product of the two equal sequences. This is one of the sequence. You can see this is one of the sequence, right? This is one of the sequence, one of the sequence. This is the second sequence. You need to multiply by these two. What is the value you're going to get it as a four? This is the third property of a sequence, inner product of two equal sequences, okay? Two equal sequences. right now uh, so we'll come back to the uh, what is that uh, another one is a very important one another important one uh, fourth property is that inner product of two different sequences now what is the meaning of uh, you know inner product of two different sequences we'll say this what is the inner product of two different sequences okay two different sequences the first sequence, let us take it as uh, uh, first sequence as plus one. Then you have another one is a plus one we've taken. Then you have minus one. You've taken another sequence is minus one. You've taken as another sequence, uh, another element as minus one, right? This is the first sequence we have taken it. This is the first sequence, okay? Then you need to multiply with the second sequence. What is the second sequence supposed to be? Second sequence suppo supposed to be plus one. Let us take it as plus one. Okay. Then again plus one. Then again we have taken plus one. Then again we have taken plus one. Right? Then again we have taken plus one. Now these two are different sequence, right? This is the first sequence, this is the second sequence. First sequence is different from the second sequence. That is actually meaning inner product of two different sequences. What is actually value you're supposed to get it here? What is the value you're going to get it? You'll get a one more sequence, right? That means what is, what is the value you're going to get it? One multiplied by one. How much you are going to get? One, right? One, then one you will get it, right? Then plus one multiplied by one again, you are going to get plus one here. Then minus one, minus one multiplied by plus one. What is the result supposed to be? Is supposed to be minus minus one. Then again, last element in the sequence minus one multiplied by plus one. Minus one multiplied by plus one. What is the result you are going to get it here? Is supposed to be minus one, right? What is the end result you are going to get it? What is the end result supposed to be? End result supposed to be what? Here is zero. End result is supposed to be. End result is supposed to be zero here, right? 
end result is supposed to be zero inner product of two different sequences this is the first sequence you have a different element this is plus one plus one minus one minus one second sequence having uh, is having a different elements here all are plus one plus one plus one and plus one multiply by these two whatever the result you are going to get it is what zero whatever the result you are going to get it is zero In this case what happens inner product of two equal sequences the result is supposed to be four result is supposed to be four here In this case the result is supposed to be zero with the different sequences that means two different stations you have taken it two different stations you have taken it here this is in the same station right now the last one adding two sequences and the result is another sequence right adding the two sequence and result is another sequence okay result is another sequence we'll take uh, what are this adding the this one here you can see adding two sequences you can add two sequence for example plus one and uh, plus one then uh, you can have minus one then uh, minus one okay this is the first sequence you have taken it you take the second sequence also you take any uh, second sequence you need to add it add two sequences here plus right what you supposed to you need to add it plus right then you take another sequence for example plus one right you take one more sequence as plus one you take one more sequence as uh, maybe a plus one right you take one more sequence as plus one you take one more sequence as plus one now uh, you add these two what is the value you're going to get it here the resultant sequence what you supposed to get it here is plus two then you'll get again plus two right this and this you need to add it how much you get it plus two now the second element plus two also uh, plus one and plus one plus one and plus one you add it is become plus two the third element is what minus one and the plus one what is the result you are going to get it the result is supposed to be zero here then what is the fourth element fourth element is minus one and minus one and the plus one what is the result is zero right result is zero this is the uh, last property of a sequence adding adding two sequences and the result is a result is another sequence so now whatever the sequence you got it is another sequence totally different sequence here you can see this this is the first sequence this is the second sequence you are just added now the what is the result you are going to get into the third sequence the meaning of zero in the sense that means the particular station is not sending any data right the, the value is supposed to be zero here right this is these are the properties of a sequence okay these are the properties of a sequence so now let me come back let me come back to the uh, uh, other topic here let me come back to the other topic come back to the topic data representation in cdma see as i told you uh, earlier right data bit zero suppose the particular station is sending the data bit zero that means the data element you are go going to represent in the sequence is minus one in the sequence you have to represent the data element right the element you need to represent whenever it comes to whenever it represents as minus one that means the particular station is sending the data as zero data bit as zero whenever you are representing the data element in the uh, sequence element in the sequence as plus one that means the particular station is sending the data bit as one suppose the particular station is silent if the particular station is silent then uh, what is the meaning here uh, you need to you are representing the element in a sequence as zero you are representing the element as zero here zero here okay as zero here so uh, this is how uh, the data representation normally happens in the cdma right cdma now let me uh, move on to another important one is uh, uh, sharing the channel in cdma what happens uh, there are four stations you can see here uh, there are four stations you can see right There are four stations you can see here four stations you can see here right and um, stations you can see station one station two station three and station four right now uh, d1 is the data of the station one and c1 is the state uh, code of the station one like this it applies to all other stations right now when it multiplies d1 and c1 
the c1 is for the station one is plus one plus one plus one plus plus one this is what the core sequence the sequence of the station one right station sequence of the station one and whatever the bit it's suppose you are sending is zero that means minus one right minus one right minus one you need to multiply with this multiply with this particular code what is the code here plus one plus one plus one plus one this is what the sequence this sequence multiply with the data data is what minus one here multiply with that what is actually the resultant is d1 multiplied by c1 that means plus one multiplied by minus one is become minus one plus one multiplied minus one is minus one then plus one minus one minus one plus one minus one minus one this is what the result you are going to get it is a similarly all other stations here also bit uh, uh, let us uh, take this uh, station number four here station four is sends the bit as one sends the bit as one that means the element you are going to represent as plus one you are rep the, you are representing as plus one right what is the code of the c4 here the station four is plus one minus one minus one plus four now this data you need to multiply with the code here right plus one multiplied by plus one what is the result you are going to get it here plus one you are going to get it as plus one now plus one is multiplied by minus one what is the result you are going to get is a minus one now plus one multiplied by minus one you are going to get a minus one plus one is multiplied by the plus one what is the result you are going to get it is a plus one this is what you are going to get it at. get it as d4 multiplied by c4 right and this is how you can represent imagine in this case what happens station one station two and station three are sending the data here and station three is uh, state you can see the station three it is silent right station one station two and station four station one station two and station four are sending the data either zero or one but uh, station three is silent silent means what how do you represent as zero right as zero now imagine now station three wants to hear from station two now imagine station three now wants to hear from station two what it's supposed to do it's supposed to do what what is actually supposed to do is see the summation of all the data what you're going to send uh, along with this channel the summation you need to find out the summation of sum of all the data what you're going to send along with uh, in a single channel right you need to take that you have to multiply with you have to multiply with the code of the station two you need to multiply with the code of the station two what is the code of the station two here plus one minus one plus one minus one this is what the code of the station two right the sum, sum of all the data you need to take it and you need to multiply with uh code of station two now when you multiply with that actually the result what you're going to get it is this this is what the result you're supposed to get it right now they uh, station three can able to see this particular data station three can able to hear from station two means this particular data can able to see it this is what actually uh uh, uh you know uh, whenever the station three wants to hear from st station two this is how uh, this is how you can interpret it. the interpretation happens like this interpretation happens like this okay now uh another uh, you can see uh, the digital signals right the signal level we'll call it as to understand the process easily the digital signal produced by each station and the data recorded at destination is shown here right it is easy to understand when it is represented with the help of a signal level now imagine bit zero okay the station one is sending the station one this is what the sequence right sequence bit zero is sending it minus one minus one minus one how do you represent as a uh, you know signal level here because all are minus right below the reference line below the reference line this is what the reference line right this is what the reference line and below this reference line you can see this right this is a reference line. this is what the reference line but all this minus one minus one minus one you have it this is actually below the reference line here below the reference line right below the reference line now we imagine the station 2 is sending minus one plus one minus one plus one initially what this is a minus one then is goes to be plus one right then again minus one then it's going to be plus one that is minus plus minus plus so easy to understand right signal level is represented easy to understand minus uh, minus one plus one minus one plus one you take a station three station three is what is silent that means they is not sending any data that means the value is zero here value zero means what is a straight line it is a straight line right it's a straight line now let us take the station four it's sending the bit one that means 
the sequence is supposed to be what plus one minus one minus one and the plus one this is what the sequence you are going to get it in the station four now this sequence can be represented with the help of a signal level that means the plus one plus one is what plus one this is what the plus one then minus one minus one this is the first minus one this is the second minus one minus one minus one plus one minus one minus one again plus one this is how you can represent uh, these signal levels of the sequence these sequence can be represented with the help of the signal level if you see this signal level you can understand easily what is actually a codice right what is actually a elements in the sequence what you can understand the sequence very easily with the help of the uh, signal levels now data on the channel data on the channel in the sense what is actually data on the channel sum of all the data sent by the station all the station are sending the data right sum of all the data are sending by the station that is actually meaning of uh, data on the channel actual data on the channel that you are representing in this way right this is what the data is supposed to be sending so if you uh, you know add all those things finally you will get this is how you're supposed to get it in the minus then is minus 3 comes here you will see seen here right the earlier case that is a uh, minus 1 minus 1 then uh, minus 3 then is plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus uh, minus 3 sorry minus 1 minus 1 minus 3 and the plus 1 this is what the total data you are going to send it over the channel that we are representing in this uh, signal level this is what the reference line the below the reference line above the reference reference line you need to understand that is very important okay very important here now of course is a similarly it applies to the composite signal also composite signal in the sense is more than one signal data on the channel we are represented like this suppose station 3 wants to hear uh station two, you need to multiply with the station code here this is a station 2 code then inner product if you if you, if you calculate okay whatever the result the inner product is supposed to get it then you can represent like this this is what the inner product is supposed to be what is that minus one plus one this is minus three and minus one then the summing of all the values what you're supposed to get it is supposed to be uh you represent it as minus four okay the you need to find out the data what is the data supposed to be sent right that means minus four divided by four that is where you are going to get a data actual data the data you supposed to get it was minus one minus four divided by four the result is what minus one the meaning of minus one is minus four, uh, one is supposed to be what zero bit right the meaning of minus one is the zero bit that's what the uh, meaning here okay now uh, the final uh, uh, thing which we need to discuss is about the Walsh tables okay about the Walsh table now what is the meaning of Walsh table uh, this is what we normally call it as a signal uh, see to generate a signal uh, sorry uh, sequence generation right <clears throat> you need to generate a sequence right to generate a sequence normally we will uh, uh, use the Walsh tables to generate a chip sequence we use a Walsh table which is two dimensional table with an equal number of rows as well as columns to generate a chip sequence we use a walsh table which is two dimensional table with an equal number of rows as well as columns now if you can refer this particular figure here right if you can refer this particular figure i can able to explain to you how things will be uh, uh, these are the two basic rules one is this w1 is, is nothing but one chip sequence w1 is nothing but one chip sequence that means it is having only one row and one column right one row and one column here then w2n is nothing but two chip sequence w2n is nothing but two chip sequence here two rows as well as two columns these are the uh, two basic rules you need to use it for everything right now uh, let us uh, take one of an example generation of uh, one chip sequence two chip sequence and four chip sequence okay with the help of this basic rule we have to generate we have to generate one chip sequence two chip sequence and four chip sequence this is what the one chip sequence supposed to be what is that plus one right see uh, here one of the very important thing you need to uh, note out here uh, in two chip sequences what is that wn this is wn and wn wn bar what is the meaning of wn bar this is actually complement of wn right wn bar is nothing but a complement of wn complement of wn you are representing as wn bar this you need to note out here very important one right in a two uh, chip sequence right use these basic rules to uh, generate the one chip sequence two chip sequence and four chip sequence 
this is a one chip sequence this is the plus one what you have generated here let me come back to the two chip sequence two chip sequence what happens wn right what is the wn value here wn value is supposed to be plus one right plus one plus one and wn value is plus one another wn value is the plus one and wn bar that means complement of wn what is the complement of wn plus one is become minus one that is what the complement of uh, what is the complement of plus one complement of plus one is equal to minus one right that is how we are representing it wn bar right minus one this is the two chip sequence now uh, this is one of the sequence you got it plus one plus one the whatever the row you are going to represent right this is actually sequence in a two chip sequence what is the uh, sequence supposed to be plus one and plus one this is the sequence row actually every individual row represents the sequence right now let me come back to the uh, four chip sequence here similar rule will be applied here or here also four chip sequence what happens four rows and four columns one two three four right four columns and one two three four four rows here now apply the same basic rule here what is the first one plus one plus one plus one and minus one right minus one minus one is supposed to be complement of plus one here then again next one plus one plus one plus one minus one minus one is a complement of plus one here then come back to this plus one plus one plus one minus one complement of plus one here right use this particular rule only wn 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 what is this wn bar the complement of wn now you have to take a complement of this this all the values complement of all these values this is a complement right that is plus one complement is what minus one uh, complement of plus one is again minus one complement of plus one is equal to minus one now minus one complement of minus one is what plus one right complement of plus oh, sorry minus one is equal to plus one this is what wn bar this is wn bar this is wn wn this is the wn now this is the wn bar right you are actually uh, this case this is a complement of wn here this is how you are representing the uh, walsh table now with the help of the walsh table we can easily understand what is the sequence you can generate the sequence what is the first sequence generated here this is the row row represent the sequence as i said the first sequence generated is plus one plus one plus one plus one this is the first sequence this first sequence consists of four elements here right this is a second sequence which is generated plus one minus one plus one minus one second sequence generated third sequence generated plus one plus one minus one minus one third sequence fourth sequence generated is plus one minus one minus one plus one this is the fourth sequence you have generated so this is how you can generate the sequence here with the help of a walsh, walsh table hopefully you understood the, this particular concept is a simple concept here right so uh, the number of sequence in a walsh table needs to be n is equal to 2 to the power of m n is nothing but number of stations okay m we have taken here so n is equal to the sequence the number of sequence in a walsh table needs to be n is equal to 2 to the power of m this is a formula is supposed to be used here okay so uh, thank you very much for listening my lecture so if you have any clarification please get back to me anytime thank you very much